In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Well, there you go, America. Donald Trump made it official. He is running for president again. Right now, control of the House is still undecided, but Democrats did hold the Senate. And that has Republicans infighting and finger pointing over who's to blame and who should lead going forward. On the House side, Kevin McCarthy's bid to be speaker is moving forward, but he faces some serious challenges ahead. And today, Florida's Rick Scott said he wants to take the Senate's top Republican leadership job away from Mitch McConnell. There's a lot to discuss. Back with us tonight, in person, Jackie Alemany, congressional investigations reporter for The Washington Post and an MSNBC contributor, and Stuart Stevens is here, a veteran of the Mitt Romney and George W. Bush presidential campaigns. He is now with the Lincoln Project. His latest book, It Was All a Lie, How the Republican Party Became Donald Trump, is a must read. Stuart, what is your take on Donald Trump's announcement? Like, could the timing be any worse for the GOP? Um, I think Donald Trump's going to be the Republican nominee. Um, and as much as we might hate it, he stands a very good chance of uh, being the next president of the United States. He should be taken very, very seriously. Um, I don't know um, if anyone can really defeat him in a primary, but they face the reality, say you're Ron DeSantis, you run against Donald Trump, you manage to win. Donald Trump will wake up the next day and do everything he can to make sure you're never president. And that's within his power. He gets Mastriano to run in Pennsylvania as an independent. If he gets Ivanka to run in Florida, um, that's pretty much it. You, you can't win. Um, he gets Masters to run in Arizona. So um, it's, it's a very uh, typically weird situation for someone thinking about uh, challenging Trump. Um, certainly, if I was DeSantis, I would advise him to wait. You're going to four years. Uh, even if Trump uh, did get elected, he can't run again unless he, like, completely suspends all elections. Um, and you could run then. So you make nothing of sort of all of these Republicans, right-wing outlets seemingly turning on Trump? I mean, just tonight, the National Review posts, a bruised Donald Trump announced a new presidential bid on Tuesday night, an invitation to double down on the outrages and failures of the last several years that Republicans should reject without hesitation or doubt. That right there doesn't sound like an enthusiastic Republican Party looking to back Donald. Well, let's don't forget the National Review famously uh, published a full cover story, uh, Never Trump, with all of their writers weighing in. Um, look at Lindsey Graham's comments tonight. He said that if Trump continues with this tone and this message, he'll be hard to beat. They'll all fall in line. The only reason that people are criticizing Trump within the Republican Party is because these candidates lost. It wasn't because he tried to overthrow the government of the United States. It wasn't because um, he uh, tried to sell out the Ukrainians. It was because, well, you know, some of our candidates lost. Let's blame Trump. They'll fall in line. This is a very weak party. It's literal uh, platform, the written document, is still to support whatever Donald Trump uh, says that he would like. So is, there, there's no courage in the, in to, to fight Trump in the Republican Party. It's a bunch of cowards and uh, weak people, and they'll fall in line behind Donald Trump. It's such an important point. They did not turn on Donald Trump over anything he said or did. It was because his candidates lost. Jackie, Trump is also a factor on Capitol Hill. Rick Scott is now looking to challenge Mitch McConnell, and supposedly Donald Trump is behind that. But Mitch McConnell spoke earlier today. He doesn't seem worried at all. Watch this. I think the outcome is pretty clear. I want to repeat again. Uh, I have the votes. I will be elected. I mean, he never sounds worked up or emotional, but he does sound cool, collected, and confident. Is he bluffing, or does he have the votes? I don't know if he has the votes at this very moment, but I think tomorrow, when the leadership election happens, he's he's going to ultimately be the leader of, of, of Senate Republicans. I think at the end of the day, I... My colleagues and I have been looking at this, these, these leadership battles sort of as a proxy war for who is going to take the blame. And I think it's really hard to separate Rick Scott, who was the head of the campaign arm for GOP, uh, the GOP Senate, 
and separate that from the disappointing results last week, uh, especially as he has sort of tried to attach himself to former President Trump, who, again, is even more responsible for the string of losses that Republicans got handed uh, as a result of propping up candidates uh, that, that a lot of Republicans will privately and publicly say uh, should not should not have gotten past the primary. Well, Rick Scott's plan to cut Medicare, Medicaid, and increase taxes probably wasn't a winner either. Let's talk about Kevin McCarthy, though. He is one step closer to, to getting his dream of being speaker. But what is he going to have to horse trade to get that? That is the question uh, today. As everyone probably knows, he uh, won his sort of the, the first ballot to become the speaker, but he only got 188 votes of support. And now he's going to have to get to 218. And that is going to be a long haul for him. What is he going to have to give up uh, in exchange for that support? You had people like Matt Gates, uh, Ralph Norman, a bunch of these House Freedom Caucus types who have been vehemently against Kevin McCarthy. They have said that no matter Gates what said he... he'd rather be waterboarded by Liz Cheney yeah. than Zach McCarthy. We had uh, one GOP lawmaker tell us that there were some GOP lawmakers who swore uh, on their firstborn's life that they would never support him for speaker. Uh, Gates saying, you know, he didn't have the votes throughout the past six years. Why is he going to have them before January? Um, so I think, again, it's going to be similar to McConnell. This is going to be an uphill battle. It's not going to be pretty. It's probably going to be particularly grim for Kevin McCarthy. But there's no one else who really wants this job right Right now, or can even get to 218 realistically. Um, but the question is, what is he going to have to give up? Stuart, McConnell and McCarthy getting these jobs? Uh, I don't think McCarthy is. Um, that would be a normal uh, course of events, and there's nothing normal about this moment in the Republican Party. Um, you know, he's trying to make these deals with people who don't like him, and he doesn't like them. Um, you know, it's what, 49, 50 days for this vote? That's a long time. I just don't think the guy's going to make it. Now, you know, McConnell, he's running against Rick Scott, who absolutely no one likes, um, who, as you pointed out, was an architect more than anyone else. Uh, he was head of the senatorial committee. How did he do? Um, I think McConnell will win. You know, it's sort of ironic, McConnell's sort of entire career, it was about packing the court, you know, lying about the Supreme Court nomination process, putting people up there who certainly deceived the public on their position on abortion. And that's what calls, that's why he's going to be the minority leader more than anything else. Um, but I don't think Rick Scott, um, he's just a weird guy, um, is going to beat McConnell. Rick Scott, if you're watching, Stewart doesn't think you have it. Jackie Alamini, Stewart Stevens, great to have both of you here.